Have you ever walked down the jet bridge and noticed something strange? No matter the airline, the aircraft, or the airport, you always board from the left side of the plane. Always. But why? It's one of aviation's quiet traditions. Something so ordinary, so routine, that most passengers never think to question it. Yet behind this simple act lies a world of engineering design, historical convention, safety procedures, and even animal instincts. Today, we're going to uncover why this strange left side rule exists and why it probably isn't going away anytime soon. So fasten your seatbelt, because what seems like a small detail is actually a key part of how modern air travel works. Let's start with something deceptively simple. Airplanes have doors on both sides. If you've ever had the rare chance to walk around a commercial aircraft on the tarmac, maybe during a remote stand boarding, you'll notice something interesting. The plane looks symmetrical. The doors on the left side and the right side are nearly identical in size and placement. But in practice, only one side is ever used to welcome you aboard. You always board from the left. Every jet bridge is connected to the left front door. The catering trucks park on the left. Even when boarding by stairs on a remote apron, you're guided to ascend from the left. It's such a normal part of air travel. Most passengers never give it a second thought. But turn your eyes to the right side of the aircraft, and suddenly, it's like a different world. There, you'll find fuel trucks snaking hoses into the wing, cargo handlers maneuvering pallets and bags into the belly of the aircraft, and maintenance teams checking mechanical access panels. It's loud, it's busy, and it's very clearly not meant for passengers. No one with a rolling suitcase is wandering around that side. This isn't a coincidence. It's not just habit or tradition. It's the result of decades of optimization, refined through trial, error, and experience in airports around the world. Airports are complex ecosystems, and an aircraft on the ground is like a pit stop in Formula One. Every second matters. And just like a pit crew doesn't let spectators into the garage, airlines don't let passengers near the right side of a working aircraft. Over time, the system evolved to split the aircraft in two. Left side for people, right side for machines. It's a clean separation that improves safety, speeds up turnaround time, and reduces the chance of costly accidents. And yet, this neat division isn't required by law. It's not written in stone. It's not a physical necessity. Which makes the question even more fascinating. Why the left? Why not the right? Or both? To answer that, we need to step back in time. Because like many things in aviation, the answer starts on the water. To understand why planes board from the left, we need to leave the runway entirely and head to the sea. Long before the roar of jet engines, before propellers even turned in the sky, before the Wright brothers took that first flight at Kitty Hawk, there were ships. And just like aircraft today, ships had their own rules, shaped by centuries of trial, error, and salty tradition. Step onto a classic sailing vessel from the age of exploration, and you'd notice something peculiar. Passengers and cargo always came aboard from the left side of the ship. In nautical terms, that side is called the port side. The right? That's starboard. But why port? The answer lies in the old design of ships. In the days before rudders were standardized at the center, most ships were steered with a large oar, called the steerboard, mounted on the right-hand side. This oar was critical for navigation, and it stuck out beyond the hull, docking on the right wrist snapping it clean off. So ships almost always docked on the left, protecting their precious steering mechanism. That habit became practice. Practice became standard, and standard became law in some ports. Centuries passed. Sailors became engineers. Harbors became airfields. And those who first built and flew aircraft often came from the world of seafaring. When early aviation pioneers designed the first passenger planes, they drew on what they knew, including the boarding process. Left side equals safe side. Right side equals operations, cargo, controls. So, like ships before them, airplanes began to adopt the same layout. Boarding and passenger entry on the left, loading and servicing on the right. There was no rule, no regulation. Just tradition, quietly carried from sail to sky. And even as technology advanced, when oars became rudders and wood became aluminum, the logic remained. Why reinvent something that worked? As commercial air travel exploded in the 20th century, manufacturers like Boeing and Airbus doubled down on this standard. Airports followed suit. Jet bridges were designed to meet the left front door. 
Ground crews were trained to avoid the right side during boarding. Suddenly, what began as a sailor's solution to protect a wooden or became a global aviation convention. It's a fascinating reminder that even in the high-tech world of modern flight, some of our most routine behaviors are rooted in centuries-old maritime logic. The left side wasn't chosen by committee. It wasn't tested in a lab. It was inherited, and it's a habit that shows no sign of changing. Now let's bring things back to today's airports. Modern aircraft ground operations are a carefully designed dance, where every second counts. Ground crews use the right side of the aircraft to load and unload cargo, refuel the wings, empty lavatories, and connect maintenance equipment. Meanwhile, the left side remains clean and clear for passengers, jet bridges, and catering. It's not just tradition anymore. It's about efficiency and safety. Imagine mixing passengers walking across the tarmac with ground staff operating fuel hoses or hydraulic lifts. It would be chaos and potentially dangerous. Keeping these operations physically separated, people on one side, machinery on the other, makes airports faster and far safer. But the left side bias doesn't stop at the cabin doors. In fact, it extends all the way to the front of the aircraft into one of the most important seats on board, the captain's seat. Walk into the cockpit of any commercial jet and you'll notice something consistent across nearly every airline, aircraft type, and flight deck layout. The captain always sits on the left, not by coincidence, not by comfort, but by design. From taxiing across busy ramps to aligning with the runway or parking at the gate, the left seat is the command center. It's where critical visual judgments are made. It's where aircraft ground maneuvering begins and ends. And most importantly, it's the vantage point for aligning the aircraft with precision during approach and parking. Now think about this. When a plane pulls into a gate, it must align within inches. The nose gear has to hit a specific line. The fuselage needs to line up with the jet bridge. And the forward left door, the one we always board through, has to meet the jet bridge just right. Who's responsible for that alignment? The captain, in the left seat, with a direct line of sight to the jet bridge. That unbroken visual reference is critical. As the plane rolls into the gate, the captain monitors the guidance system, but also uses their own eyes to verify alignment. Being seated on the same side as the jet bridge offers immediate spatial awareness, something that would be far less intuitive if the captain sat on the right. It's a subtle design choice, but in aviation, subtle choices matter. Even something as simple as which side a pilot sits on can influence how quickly and safely a jet can be positioned at a gate, especially in crowded hub airports where gate turns are timed down to the minute. And there's another layer. Training. Since every commercial aircraft is designed this way, flight schools and simulators across the world teach pilots to operate from the left seat as the default command position. That consistency simplifies crew training and certification, especially when pilots move between aircraft types or airlines. But it also reinforces the left side bias throughout the entire pilot pipeline, from student pilots to captains of wide-body intercontinental jets. So when you're boarding your next flight and see the captain glancing out of the cockpit window as you approach the jet bridge, remember this. They're not just watching, they're navigating guiding tons of metal to dock with precision, from the left, as tradition and design intended. And as we've learned in aviation, the left side isn't just for passengers. It's where the decisions are made. Aircraft manufacturers like Boeing and Airbus also play a role. They design planes with primary passenger doors on the left and cargo doors on the right. And they standardize that layout across fleets, which means airports can also standardize their infrastructure, jet bridges, ground vehicles, gate layouts around this universal setup. If one plane had boarding on the right and another on the left, everything would take longer. Gates would need to be reconfigured. Safety procedures would need to change. Ground crew training would double. Uniformity isn't just convenient. It's critical in an industry where turnaround time directly affects profit. There's also a subtle psychological benefit. Think about it. Most people are right-handed. Boarding on the left means passengers usually move to their right once inside the aircraft, toward their seat. It's a more natural movement, helping people navigate aisles faster and with fewer jams at the front of the plane. It's not a huge deal, but when you're loading 300 people in 30 minutes or less, every second counts. So, could we ever board from the right? Technically, yes. 
There's nothing stopping airlines from designing a plane with a right side door as the primary entrance. But doing so would break decades of operational standards, retraining needs, airport layout rules, and manufacturer protocols. There are a few rare cases where right side boarding happens, usually in VIP aircraft, military operations, or remote airfields where no jet bridges exist. But for mainstream commercial travel, it's left side or bust. So the next time you step onto an aircraft, take a moment before you walk through that left side door. Look around. There's a world of invisible decisions all around you, made not just for convenience, but for history, safety, and global coordination. You're not boarding on the left just because it looks good. You're boarding on the left because it works. It's faster, it's safer, and it's deeply rooted in how the entire aviation world is built. And like so much in aviation, it's something you'll probably never notice again. Until now, if you enjoyed this journey into aviation's hidden rules, hit that like button and consider subscribing. Got a question you've always wondered about while flying? Drop it in the comments. I just might make a whole video about it. Until then, safe travels, and always board from the left.